Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on configuring a combo box on a user form in Microsoft Excel. So I have here a Microsoft Excel workbook. It has two worksheets, data and storage. And I have some fictitious data. Uh, participants, and there's a hundred of them, and pretest scores and post-test scores. And I have this little blue uh, box here that activates a fairly straightforward user form right, called main form. And this allows you to select from the participants their ID number and get the matching pretest score. So you can see for ID number 1008, the pretest score is 51. And that matches what, what's on the data worksheet. So I'm going to build uh, another user form uh, from scratch to show you how I constructed the user form and how I configured the combo box, which is uh, this first control here with the drop down. So before I get into uh, the coding side with the user form, I want to show you the name manager and what has to be done for this to work in advance, or to work the way I have it working here. You need to have two dynamic name ranges. Now I have another video that talks about how to set these up, but I just want to show you quickly how these are configured. Uh, I have one named participants, which covers cell A2 all the way through the last cell that contains data. So if you were to add more participant ID numbers to this list, the range would expand. Uh, that's what we call a dynamic name range. So you can see it uses the offset function down here and it's data A2 comma 0 comma 0 then count A and then data A colon A minus 1. So that's how we get uh, the range I have. Uh, you can see here that's highlighted to the left. So then I have all data and the all data function is still offset and it's identical to participants except at the very end there's a comma and a three which tells Excel to include all three columns in this range. Again this excludes the headings. So you can see uh, in the area with the uh, border here it's uh, all three columns excluding the headings all right, those will come in handy later on when we're doing the coding. So now let's build the user form. And we'll do that by uh, clicking Alt F11. All right, so you can see I have information from the other user form up here, but I'm going to create a new one. So you click Insert on the top menu and then User Form. And you can see looks pretty plain to start with. Uh, I have the toolbox open. This is important. If yours isn't open, uh, by default, just click up here next to the question mark. and You'll need this. All right, so it's important to understand in terms of user forms that they're in part governed by properties, and the properties are here on the left. The name of the user form is different than the caption. So you can see there's a name, and then there's a caption. So I'm going to change the name. The other one's called main form. So I'm going to call this main form two. And notice how I capitalize the first letter of each word, but I don't use spaces or underscores. This is a fairly common method of uh, naming objects when programming. And then for caption, I'm going to name caption main form Two. Now notice here, this changes the caption up top, and of course you can put whatever text you want in there, including spaces. So this is what the user is actually going to read. Uh, the name is what you're going to use in the code. I'm going to change the back color from the gray. I think the other one is green. So I'm going to make this one uh, maybe a like a dark blue. Uh, 
yeah okay so again you have a lot of different colors you can choose from this one's kind of a dark blue all right and I'm going to alter the font which is under here font I'm going to change this to a Times New Roman 12 um, which is uh, of course APA style but this doesn't have to be APA style I just like using Times New Roman 12 so now using the uh, toolbox I'm going to add in a combo box you can see it's the fourth one over so you click on that uh, item and simply drag it onto the or, or drag a rectangle on the actual user form and the size that you're going to want and notice it retains the properties of the user form so I don't it already says times in Roman uh, 12 so I don't have to redo that for everything it's going to come up with that font I'm going to expand this out a little bit and add two text boxes so the third one over so I'm going to add a text box here and then I'm going to uh, copy this and paste. This way they're the same size. All right, so two text boxes. Uh, notice that this one is named text box one, and this is text box two. And of course, this is combo box one. These are the default names. Uh, typically, we do change these, uh, but just to keep this uh, easier to understand, I'm going to leave the default names in. So comma box one, text box one, and text box two. And then I'm going to add labels that go above these three items. So label is the second one over. All right, and you can see that even though it retains the times around in 12, it's hard to read because of the back color. So I'm going to change the four color to white and I'm going to leave it named label one but I'm going to change the caption to ID number notice when you exit this field it changes up here so again I'm going to copy and paste and of course I'm going to change these values and I'm going to paste again Actually, this is label 2 I'm going to change the caption to pretest and then label 3 I'm going to change the caption to post test so now that I've created the user form and I've placed all the objects on it that I'm going to place one. I'm going to just resize it. And I'm going to go back to the worksheet and I'm going to add a control so I can open that user form. So I'm just going to go to shapes and put in a rectangle. You can see I already have one in here that's blue so I'm going to make this one orange. And going back to the code view, so Alt F11 in uh, Sheet 1 data over here, data is Sheet 1. I'm going to add a subroutine, which is going to be very similar to the one that's already here. It's just going to say Open Form 2. And then it's going to be main form two dot show. Then going back to this orange uh, rectangle, right click, assign macro, and you want sheet one dot open form two. Select OK. And now if you click on the orange you can see that that form comes up. So on the blue is the original one I showed you, and then the orange is the one I just created. 
Now, of course, this one's not configured yet, but all the objects are on the user form. So Alt F11, going back to the code view, I want to configure, I'll minimize this one, I want to configure the new user form. So if you go to the combo box control and you look at the properties and move down, you're going to see a property called row source. And since I have the dynamic named ranges already defined in Excel, all I have to do is place the name in here, participants. So really convenient and, and very easy. Simply take the name of the dynamic name range and type it into row source. So just to show you how this works, going back, open up the new form. You can see that the ID numbers are available now. Now this is displaying eight in one time. And if you want to change that, search for the property called list rows, which you can see is at eight. And let's just change that to uh, 20. So this will display 20 participant IDs at one time. So the next thing that I want to accomplish is I want when a user selects an ID number for the corresponding pretest value to appear and the corresponding post test value to appear. So I have to go back to Excel and to the storage worksheet and show you what I've done here. And I'm going to add uh, another item to it. So you can see here is the um, ID number and this will be the current ID number selected by the other user form and I'll show you how I did that uh, in a few minutes. And then you have the corresponding um, pretest in this case. And you can see the function that's used is a, is a uh, match function nested in an index function. So the index match method and I also have another video that uh, explains how to do that. So as you can see, this is configured for the pretest. So I'm going to use the index match method here to configure this for the post test. So the first argument it's asking for is the array. Of course, this will be all data. And you can see this automatically comes up at tab. Then you have the row number, which would be the uh, match function. So now we're looking at a different set of arguments, the lookup value, which we know is A1. The lookup array, which is participants. Again, this will come right up. And the match type, we're going to use an exact match, which would be 0. So now we're back in the index function. And we'll add a comma here. And you can see it's asking now for the column number. In this case, that'll be three. That'll be the column number. So you can see from uh, the pretest, it's two. It's the second column, but for the post test, it's three. It's the third column. So for the value, the, per the participant ID rather one zero zero eight, the pretest should be fifty one, and the post test should be fifty. If we go over and look here, we can see. In fact, that is true. So now I'll show you how we can cause the user form, the combo box specifically, to place this value here. Moving back to code view, we're going to double click on the combo box. What that's, that is going to do is it's going to bring up a subroutine and by default it's going to be combo box change. So this subroutine will run every time the combo box is changed and that's what we want. Now I've already created another user form and this is going to overlap a bit with it. Of course normally we would only create one user form to, to complete one function. Uh, but So this is going to overlap with the 
previous value, the uh, A1 in storage. But here's how you do it. So first we start with um, sheets. And in quotations, uh, storage. Right, that points to the storage worksheet. And then the specific range. Again, in quotes, uh, we want A1. And then we want that to equal the value of the combo box. So in this case, combo box one dot value. So every time the combo box is changed, this address, A1, on the sheet storage will be set to equal the value of combo box 1. Now you'll notice that I didn't uh, capitalize this correctly, but if I hit enter, it's going to automatically change it. So now it is correct. So then looking at the other part of what we want to accomplish here, we want text box 1 to equal the pretest score, which we know would be in cell B1 on storage, and then the post test that would be cell C1. So we want text box 1 to equal B1. Let's do that first. So I'm going to copy the code here just to save time. I'm going to change it to B1. And over here on the left, put in text box one value. All right, that's pretty straightforward. So now the value of text box one will be equal to whatever is in range B1 on the storage worksheet. And similarly, uh, I'll copy this entire line of code paste it again and just change this to text box 2 and change this to C1. A little time saving trick there. So moving back to the data worksheet. We bring out main form 2. We select an ID, let's say 1012. And we would hope by looking over here that it would be a pretest score of 53 and a post test of 56. And of course, that's what you have. No. So I will now select another value. Let's say 1017. We know that should be 51 and 47. And of course, it matches. So for large amounts of data, uh, this little user form is a convenient way to kind of scroll through the different participants and see different values. Of course, you could configure this in any manner. Uh, you could have the ID number uh, where it is, the comment box where it is, and have these text boxes below it, uh, make it more of a vertical look, or as I have it here, which is set up like a row horizontally, uh, which is how I could display data um, of this type. So a lot of different options, a lot of flexibility uh, with user forms and specifically with the uh, combo box. I hope you found this video on configuring combo boxes on user forms in Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.